In Legends, and out of all the Jedi in the temple, Anakin respected and wanted to be like this one man by the name of Jor Sabayoth, a very powerful Jedi indeed but also a Jedi that loved to be in the forefront of conflict, whether it be war or smugglers or any type of trouble. He wanted to sniff it out himself, which is why Anakin admired him so much. Which leads us straight into the story. What if Joris Sabayoth trained Anakin Skywalker? After the Battle of Naboo, Obi-Wan and Anakin returned somberly to the Jedi Temple after the death of Qui-Gon, and Obi-Wan tells Yoda what Qui-Gon promised him to do. And Yoda said, Speak with the council, I must. And after a session with the council, they emerged and Yoda went back to Obi-Wan and said, Train him, you cannot. As a man approaches them, Obi-Wan starts to speak, but I promise Qui-Gon as the man interrupts him, Yes, you did, and your promise will be held, but you are too young and still have much to learn. I will train him, for I do not have a Padawan. Obi-Wan thinking about this said, But I promised Qui-Gon I would train him, not someone else. But I agree with what you said, and I will let you train him. He shall be a better master than I ever could. May said, Then it is settled. Jor Sabayoth will train the supposed chosen one. As Jor agrees, him and Obi-Wan walk out to meet Anakin. Obi-Wan says, This will be your new master, Jor Sabayoth. Hey there, little one. Don't be afraid. I will teach you many things, and you will become a very powerful Jedi. But first, tell me of your adventures. As Anakin tells him of his adventures, Joris is trying to feel out his mentality and his mind to try to teach him to his strengths. And as Obi-Wan leaves, he feels happy and sad, feeling that Joris Sabayoth will be a better master than he ever could be. But he knew that Qui-Gon asked him and hoped he would forgive him. So as the years go by, Obi-Wan is now a highly praised Jedi Knight and a general in the Clone Wars, and Anakin is now a young adult and a very powerful Padawan that could think on his feet and was the best swordsman of his age learning all type of battle techniques from his master. Anakin was also friends with a young man named Balin, who was slightly younger than Anakin, but when they fought together, they were a fearsome duo. It also helped that Balin's master was Obi-Wan, so they saw each other a lot, because Obi-Wan felt like he needed to check in with Anakin, because he was originally supposed to be his master. But in the midst of a battle, Balin and Anakin encountered a Sith by the name of Darth Maul. And they were in a duel with him when Maul said this. I killed your master. Over and over and over, so much, it annoyed Anakin. And he said, no, you didn't. He's right over there. No, no. Your first master. Master Qui-Gon, if I remember correctly. Anakin looked surprised and confused at first. And said to himself, he's lying. He's lying. Kenobi told me he killed him. And Kenobi wouldn't lie to me. Then he became very focused as Maul looked at him. You don't believe me, do you? Anakin was silent and kept on fighting as Maul cut his forearm off and he screamed in pain. And when Joris heard this, he ran as fast as he could, jumping for Maul, scaring him away as he looks at Anakin and screams for a medic. Back at the temple, as Anakin is waking up from his sleep, he sees his brand new robotic hand and remembers what happened. He also sees his master, and the first thing he asks for is Balin and Kenobi. And when Joris returns with them, Balin says, Are you okay, Anakin? Yes, I'm fine, he says. Master Kenobi, didn't you say that you killed the Sith on Naboo all those years ago? Then Kenobi said, Yes, of course. I did, you have asked me, and I have told you many times. I know, I know, I know, says Anakin. I was just making sure because the Sith we were fighting said that he killed Qui-Gon. No, that's impossible. I watched him die myself. Didn't you say he was red with horns and that you sliced him in half? Yes, that's exactly what I said. Because this Sith was red with horns and has robotic legs. Then it's not impossible, Kenobi says. That could definitely be him. He must have been training to disarm you. I mean, disforearm you. As they all burst into laughing. After everything had calmed down, Anakin went to meditate and heard Kenobi. Kenobi. Want Kenobi. As he opens his eyes and looks around, he sees nothing and returns to meditating. And when it is over, he gets up to walk back inside when he hears someone behind him. So he spins, igniting his lightsaber and puts it to their neck. But it was only his master, Jor Sabayoth. What was that fool? He asked. Sorry, master. I thought you were an intruder. Did you see something in your meditation? I heard Maul. He said, Kenobi, Kenobi. I want Kenobi. So I was a little on the edge, I guess. I'm sorry. It's okay. Go to sleep. You're right. 
as always. As the days went by, then weeks, then months, Maul started to go out of Anakin's mind. Until Anakin was on a trip to a town with his master, Kenobi and Balin. And they were having dinner with some of the townsfolk when they heard people screaming outside. So the Jedi went out of the house and there it was, a house on fire and people screaming as they ran away. Before any of them could even guess what was happening, there was a ship and then they saw two red lightsabers and then a third as Maul and Dooku walk away from the burnt building. As the Jedi ignite their lightsabers, two more Sith come from the ship, being Asajj Ventress and Savage Opress, also igniting their lightsabers. There was a total of seven red blades, or four Sith versus four Jedi. As Maul says, We meet at last, Kenobi. Our duel shall be legendary. As the Sith rush the Jedi, the battle commences in a big red and blue blur. As Maul was fighting Kenobi, George versus Dooku, Anakin versus Ventures, and Balin versus Savage. It was a fair fight for the most part, but Anakin was starting to get the upper hand on Ventress, and as he disarms her, he took the finishing blow when he shot with electricity from Dooku. As Maul and Kenobi are in a deadlock, Maul says, You might have forgotten about me, but I will never forget about you and what you did. As Kenobi releases and goes for a deadly blow, as it is blocked, and Maul stabs him through the heart, killing him. As Anakin wakes up, he sees Kenobi falling to the ground, as Maul was grinning with pleasure, or so Anakin thought. But then he sees Kenobi's lightsaber through Maul's body, as he also falls to the ground. And Anakin goes to Kenobi's body to find him barely alive, as Kenobi says, You are the chosen one. You will bring balance. And always remember, the Force is with you. As Anakin gets up, he sees the fight is over, as Count Dooku, Savage Opress, and the injured Asajj Ventress were retreating as Joris and Balin were following them. As Anakin runs over to them, and as the ship starts to lift off, Anakin uses the force to try to pull it back. And in his hatred of the Sith for the death of Kenobi, he even starts crushing the ship. And Joris comes to help him as Balin throws his lightsaber at the engine, slicing him as the Jedi run behind a house as the engine explodes, blowing up the rest of the ship. Then Balin looked around for Anakin, but he didn't see him. So he peeked from behind the house, and there he was, standing in the street, right where he was when the ship blew up. But he had used the force to block the explosion, making a shield around himself. Now Anakin was walking toward the pieces of the ship, some of it still on fire. As Balin saw who he was moving towards, it was a burnt and half-alive Dooku. As Anakin walked up, Balin said to Joris, Look, Anakin is going to capture Dooku. We will be one step closer to winning the war. As Joris and Balin start walking towards Anakin and Dooku, Anakin ignites his lightsaber and in one very swift motion, he slices off Dooku's head. As he turns back to Joris and Balin, he looks different, he looks evil. Then Anakin shook his head and it was gone, just like that. He says, what happened? The last thing I remember is Obi-Wan in my arms. As he exclaimed, Obi-Wan! As he ran to him, he fell to his knees and started weeping. After Obi-Wan's funeral and burial, Yoda and Joris come up to Anakin as Yoda says, Very sad this day is. The loss of Kenobi has dealt a huge blow to the sacred Jedi Order. As Anakin says, That's all you care about, is it? The Jedi Order. You don't care about who Kenobi was or what he did. All you care about is what he could do for the Jedi Order. As Anakin stops away, Yoda says, Made a very strong connection with Obi-Wan, has he? Hmm. As Joris said, I'll go speak to him. No. Let him have some time by himself. He will need it. The next morning, Anakin heard a knock on the door. Come in. As Joris walked in and Anakin remembered what happened and said, I'm sorry for as he was cut off. I know you are, my young apprentice. I know you were just expressing your feelings. But Yoda has called you into the meditation room for a talk. I don't know what he will tell you, but you should listen to him. He just wants to help you. Anakin got there. He sat down. As Yoda and him sat there for a while, Anakin said, Master, I'm sorry for what I said. Yoda replied with, Much emotion you have, young Skywalker, but correctly used it must. Channel through your compassion it must. So you're not mad? Follow me, you will. Anakin is confused by him, and Yoda walks out of the room and into the council room, and all of the council members were there as Yoda takes a seat in the chair. As Mace says, We have brought together to congratulate Anakin Skywalker, Jor Sabaoth, and Balin Skull, and the late great Obi-Wan Kenobi on defeating four Sith, and as a reward, Anakin and Balin, you two are being granted the rank of Jedi Knight, and Joris a seat on the council. 
Anakin and Balin immediately walk forward and bend down on one knee, as Yoda knights both of them. As they thank the council, Jor says, I will meditate on this, and I will tell you my answer when I have decided. And Mace answered him, as you should. Jor Sabayoth, Anakin Skywalker, and Balin Skull, you are dismissed. After Anakin finishes congratulating Joris and Balin, and them congratulating him, he leaves to go to find his most loyal friends, and to tell them of the good news. After he arrives at the house, he sees Padme Amidala, and he runs up to her, and she says, Why are you in such a good mood? Tell me what happened. As Anakin is telling her, he almost starts crying when he talks about Obi-Wan, but is filled with joy when he talks about the knighting ceremony. Well, that's a great reason to be in a good mood. There's only one downside. What's that? I won't see my master as much, and I will miss his presence. Why? Is he leaving? No, no. The council gave him a seat, so he will be becoming a Jedi Master. But he hasn't actually accepted it, but I'm guessing that he will. Back at the temple, as Joris parted ways with Balin and Anakin, he went straight to his most loyal friend. And when he arrived, there he was, Chancellor Palpatine. And after some small talk, Joris says, I have some great news. I was given a seat as a council member. Have you accepted it yet? says Palpatine. No, no, not yet. I was thinking about it, but I'm not sure I'm ready. Wise choice, but don't think too hard, because I am sure you are ready. You are one of the most wise and powerful Jedi in the Order. They should be begging you to join them. You really think so? I know so. As he puts his hand on George's shoulder, If you decide to take this offer, then I shall ask you one thing, that you will help me by spying on them, because I am convinced that they are scheming to overthrow me and take over the Republic. No, no, they wouldn't do that. You must be mistaken. I know they are not perfect, but they are loyal to you and the Republic. They would never turn against you or the Republic. I see it happening already now. They plan to destroy me and take over. That's why I need you to report on their dealings. I will tell you anything that you need, and that could be a threat to you. Thank you, Joris, my old friend, and congratulations. Thank you, kind Chancellor. As he bows and walks out, still very confused about what he should do. He did say that he would tell him, but should he stick to his word? Anakin had just finished talking with Padme, and he was headed to Palpatine's chambers. When he arrived, Palpatine said, Hello, my young friend. Anakin said, I have some great news. I have been promoted to a Jedi Knight. Congratulations, my friend, but you still deserve more. Your power is too much to only be a Jedi Knight. You deserve to be a Jedi Master. Thank you for the kind words, but I'm not ready to be a Master. I don't have the skill or wisdom of any of the Jedi in those seats but thank you anyway. Later that night, Anakin had a nightmare. It was about the death of his wife Padme. He was terrorized by this, and the next morning, went back to Palpatine. Because Joris was gone on a mission, and the rest of the Jedi would be mad that he had a wife, for it was against the Jedi rules and customs to love anyone, or anything, or as most people call it, attachments. As Anakin told Palpatine of what he saw, Palpatine was horrified by this and asked, Is there anything you can do to stop this from happening? No, I don't know how. Well, I heard this story I think that could help you. Have you ever heard the tale of Darth Plagueis the Wise? No, I thought not. It's not a story the Jedi would tell you. As Palpatine told him of this tale, he said that Plagueis knew the way to save people he loved from dying, but ultimately got killed by his apprentice, Darth Sidious. Is it possible to learn this power? Not from a Jedi. Then Anakin left and pondered on what Palpatine had told him. And that night, he had a nightmare, and he was out on the patio, and Padme went out and said, I heard you screaming. What's wrong? Why can't you fall asleep? Anakin takes a deep breath and says, I had a dream like the ones I used to have of my mother before she almost died. But this time, I will not let that happen to you. I will protect you from whatever it is that wants to hurt you. The next day, Anakin got alert from the Jedi Council, calling him back to their chambers for an emergency meeting. So when he got there, his old master, Joris, was there. Then Yoda said, Sending you on a mission? We are. To you to pout, you shall go. As May said, Yes, we have heard that General Grievous is there by a distress signal from the Utapalans. We are sending both of you to go and capture Grievous. But if not, you know what you have to do. Then Joris and Ankin left and set a course for Utapal. After a little bit of awkward silence, they start with some small talk. And after they have talked for a while, Anakin says, I have something important to tell you. What? You know you can tell me anything. I have been having nightmares about my wife and that she will die. I don't know why, but she was screaming in pain like the ones I used to have about my mother, if you remember. What have you tried to do? I talked to Chancellor Palpatine and he told me of a Sith legend about someone named Darth Plagueis the Wise 
and how he could manipulate the Metachlorian to create life. And what happened to this man? He was killed by his apprentice. Hmm, interesting. I've never heard of this Plagueis, and he is not a Jedi, obviously. So how does Palpatine know of him? So what did you say next? I asked him if it was possible to learn this power, but he said not from a Jedi. This is very strange. He also asked me to spy on the Jedi for him, and tell me what they were planning to do, because he said that they were planning to overthrow him. Right after this, they came out of hyperspace and landed pretty far away from the city so they would be undetected. As they walk, Anakin says, so do you think what Dooku told Kenobi after the Battle of Geonosis is true? That Palpatine is the Sith Lord we are looking for? The leader of the Sith and the Republic? It seems very possible. As we find and capture Grievous, we must tell the Council of this. As they spied in, they saw where Grievous was, and there were over a thousand battle droids. Joris using his comm to tell Windu said, We have confirmation Grievous is here, and we need backup. Good, sending clones your way now. Now what? We can't just wait. You see those tanks? We can blow them up and use it as a distraction. But we can't harm the Utapowans. Yeah, you're right. Then one of us needs to be the bait and the other fight Grievous. I think the best way to do this is for you to be the bait and I fight Grievous because I have been trained for dueling and you're better versus a blaster. I agree, but be careful and may the force be with you. You as well. Mace goes to Palpatine and tells him that they have located Grievous and that the war will be over very soon. As Palpatine says, good, good. Mace says, so I am also demanding you turn over your emergency powers once this is over. And what makes you think I'll do that? You will be imprisoned if you don't oblige. And what makes you think you will be able to do that? As Mace ignites his lightsaber saying this will. It's treason then. As Palpatine ignites his lightsaber jumping at Windu as he dodges the attack. As he shoots a burst of lightning at Mace, their duel is like poetry, one line and the next rhyming as their blades clash, it's a thing of beauty. As their blades bounce off of one another, attacks, it goes back and forth, back and forth. It seems like Mace has the upper hand as Palpatine shoots him with lightning, making him lose his balance as Windu force pushes Palpatine, making him lose his, as it goes on and on. Joris is ready waiting to see Anakin to make sure he is ready as he sees Anakin up in the roof, looking straight at him, as they nod. Then Joris runs out using the force push, shoving multiple droids into each other as Griffith says, after him. As he runs away, Griffith is only left with his bodyguards, who are looking at Joris. As Anakin sees a tank part hanging from the ceiling and says, easy enough, as he uses the force to rip it from its support as it falls crushing the bodyguards but just missing Grievous as Anakin jumps down. He says, We meet at last, General Grievous. As he says, Jedi scum, you shouldn't have come. I thought it was a smart choice. Foolish boy, you are overconfident. I've been trained in your Jedi arts by Count Dooku. I shall be your doom. I killed your master. You should be easy enough. As Yusha separates his arm and ignites his four lightsabers, as Anakin says, Oh, that's new. As Griffiths laughs, which then makes him cough. As he runs at Anakin, he starts spinning his lightsabers and getting closer and closer as Anakin jumps over him, slicing off his top two hands in the process, also skimming his face. Look, we're twins, as he points to his scar. As Palpatine says, this will be the end of you and your beloved Jedi Order. You cannot defeat me. I'm the most powerful person in the galaxy. That might be right, Chancellor, but your overconfidence will be your undoing. As Windu charges at him with his lightsaber out by his side, as Palpatine deflects it into the window, destroying it, as he shoots a flurry of lightning at Windu, who tries to use his lightsaber to block it back at him until it overpowers him. So much it throws him off balance as Palpatine force pushes him into the wall, as his lightsaber slips out of his hand and falls out the window. As Mace falls to the ground, he tries to use the force to pull his lightsaber back. Palpatine throws his lightsaber as Mace ignites his but it is too late. It had penetrated his heart, killing Mace. As Palpatine stands up triumphant, he puts on his robes and opens his holo projector and tells every clone commander to execute Order 66. And they say, yes sir, it shall be done my lord. A few minutes earlier, Joris is running away from the droids. The clones arrive, shooting the droids with their ships as they release the clones inside and leave before they get shot down by the anti-air artillery. 
As the clones defeat many of the droids, they start focusing on the clones instead of Joris, so he ignites his lightsaber and goes ham on the droids, killing 10, then 30, then 50, then 100, up to 200 until all of them were taken care of. Then Joris tells the clones to stay as he runs back to Anakin as he is in a deadlock with Grievous. As he releases, ducking under Grievous' hit and stabs him in the heart, killing him. As Joris says, congratulations, you did the easy part, as he hugs Anakin. Yes, I'm surprised you didn't fight me in which spot you wanted. As they laugh, they go to the use of Hound Lear as he gives them a ship as his thanks for saving them. As Joris and Anakin are about to leave, Commander Cody, after putting down his horror projector, points at them and says, fire, as he clones shoot a barrage of blaster bolts at the Jedi. As they hop in their ship, trying to leave as a Republic attack cruiser comes out of hyperspace to stop them. But it was too late. They were gone. The Jedi had taken a different route. They were not going to Coruscant, or so they thought, because they jumped the wrong way because the Venator blocked the way to Coruscant. So they jumped at an angle to try to miss the ship. Where are we going? Joris asked. This is the way I used to go to not be detected by the Separatists, so they wouldn't know where we went. I'm hoping that they won't expect us to go straight to Coruscant from here. We will stop at Naboo, there I'll ask Padme to come pick us up, she can take us back. After they landed and contacted Padme, she said, Chancellor Palpatine has changed the Republic into a galactic empire, so he is now the Emperor and can do almost whatever he wants. It's worse than we thought. He said the Jedi were traitors because Mace Windu tried to kill him. Then Jorah said, so he must be the Sith Lord, we have to stop him. Anakin, are you sure that is something that you can do? You have told me yourself that he told you about Plagueis, saying this is the only way to learn the power is from the Sith Lord. Can I trust you kill him if the time comes? Anakin hesitated, as Jorah said, I need you to put your selfish desires aside and do what's best for the greater good and for the galaxy. Yes, I will, I will. If the time comes down to it, you can trust me, you have my word. I know that's difficult to say, but I need you now more than ever. As Padme brings Anakin and Joris back to Coruscant, the temple is in flames and is partly destroyed. As Anakin says, you didn't tell us about this, Padme answers him by saying, it wasn't like this when I left. We are too late. No, no, Anakin says. We have to save the galaxy, not just the Jedi. We can save the rest from his tyranny. Anakin kisses Padme, saying, I will come back. As Padme says, yes, please, we need you. We, Anakin asks. As Padme looks at her belly and says, yes, we. Anakin is even more sure of himself. I give you my word, I will see you again. As Anakin and Joris leave, Joris says, Most likely all the Jedi are dead, so we need to take him on ourselves. And remember, bones are not our friends anymore. We need to sneak in and catch him by surprise. And I know exactly how to do that. Palpatine had just finished turning the Republic into his galactic empire and telling the people that the Jedi are evil because they tried to kill him. As he walks into his room, he sees something and then someone. It's Anakin and Joyce. Oh, hello my good friends. Come to congratulate me? Why didn't my guards tell me? As he looks around, he sees his guards dead on the ground. As Anakin says, this doesn't need to get messy. Foolish Jedi, your republic is mine. Your life is mine. Your sacred Jedi Order is gone. Your friend Balin is dead. And soon you will be with him once more. As Palpatine ignites his lightsaber, so does Anakin and Joris. As Joris says, we shall defeat him together. Anakin is hearing what he is saying, but is also thinking, should I actually kill him? Because I need him to save Padme. But I told Joris, and I'm keeping to my word, I will not let my master down. As Anakin says, may the force be with us. As Palpatine jumps, spinning and screaming at Joris as Anakin jumps in front of him, blocking the attack and holding the blade. As Anakin says, your reign is over, Chancellor. As Joris swings at Palpatine, he ignites his second lightsaber to stop it. He does, but is hit out of his hand by Anakin kicking him. As Palpatine shoots a flurry of lightning at Anakin, stunning him and throwing him back. As he charges at Joris, who doesn't stand a chance, he is holding on for dear life using force pushers and getting weaker and weaker and even more tired as Palpatine is only getting stronger and stronger. As Palpatine disarms him, slicing off his hand in the process, he stands over him. Triumphant, he shoots a huge flurry of lightning at him as Anakin leaps at Palpatine and Palpatine turns around just in time to block it. 
As Anakin and Palpatine duel, Anakin realizes the amount of danger he is in, so he starts throwing things at Palpatine, who easily pushes them away, laughing at him all the while. Anakin is running around the room until he quickly turns back, going for a stab, thinking Palpatine wouldn't expect it, but Palpatine perfectly blocks it, sliding his blade off of it. As Anakin stumbles, he is forced to push into the wall, dropping his lightsaber, leaving him completely defenseless. Joris is still in tremendous pain and agony. As Anakin looks at Joris, he takes a deep breath. Then at Palpatine and says, Even if I die here, I will die with my master and fighting for not just my freedom, but the freedom of the galaxy. As Anakin gets up, igniting his lightsaber, losing his balance but catching himself on the wall, and Palpatine walks over to Joris and says, This master? As he stabs him through the heart. As Joris takes his last breath, Palpatine's laugh echoed through the heart. Then Anakin said, that was a mistake. Palpatine looks confused, but was smiling with hate. Why? Because you have no one left to die for you? No, because I have nothing left to fear. Let's make this last dance a memorable one. I will remember it, but not because of you. As Anakin charges at Palpatine, he is shocked by his speed and agility. As Anakin is calm as the waves on a still day. He is sharp and powerful because he is thinking clearly. But Palpatine is just as fast and even more proficient with the lightsaber. And much like the mace battle, it is going back and forth in a red and blue blur. They were going fast, it was hard to see what was happening as it stops. And Anakin is in a deadlock with Palpatine as Anakin says, You underestimate my power. Maybe, but you still lose chosen one as palpatine shoots a flurry of lightning pushing anakin back anakin on the ground in agony he had lost anakin thought it was over palpatine would rule the galaxy now as palpatine stands over him look what has become of you and your jedi order they are nothing compared to me i will fight as long as i'm still breathing as anakin starts to get back up his force pushed back into the wall foolish boy now you will die. As he goes down with his lightsaber, it is hit, which pushes it out of the way of Anakin, making it miss. As Anakin and Palpatine look, they hear, Not if anything to say about it, I have. At an end, your rule is, and not short enough, it was. Master Yoda, what a surprise. Worry not, short our duel will be. As Yoda ignites his lightsaber, jumping at Palpatine as they go up on the pod into the center chamber. As Yoda and Sidious go at it, they pull around, blocking and striking incredibly fast. As Sidious jumps into another pod and Yoda follows him, as they go into a deadlock, as Anakin clicks the button for the pod to come back down, Sidious force pushes Yoda away into a different pod. As he starts hurling them at Yoda, Yoda uses the force holding them still, as they're both pushing it, until they let go, making it drop. As Sidious fires lightning at Yoda, he absorbs it with his hand, shooting it back at Sidious, as he blocks it with the lightsaber. He says, this fight cannot be won by your mastery of the force. As they jump at each other, Anakin gets to the top of the pods. He sees them fighting, just a hundred feet away. He sees Yoda and Sidious are pretty evenly matched, until Palpatine puts his lightsaber up to Yoda's throat, which he tries to block, but his hand is grabbed by Sidious when he says, now you will die. As Palpatine pulls up his lightsaber as it stabs through him, as he falls over dead. Anakin looks and sees he had done it. He was dead. They, him and Yoda, the Jedi, had won. Anakin had thrown his lightsaber at Palpatine. He was so consumed with killing Yoda, he didn't see it, and he had paid the price. As Anakin falls down, exhausted, and Yoda goes over to him, congratulating him, saying, Wise you are, young Skywalker. And true the prophecy is, the Sith you have defeated and the Jedi Order will be restored. I shall follow you since we are the only two Jedi remaining. More there are, just us, no, even today, and no, lead you shall. Me, but I'm not ready, I'm not as wise or even as powerful as you. Maybe not, but you will be. I will teach you, and you will know everything I know. Choosing you, I am, because saw the flaw in me, did you. As Anakin returns to Padme, he knows what he must do. He must be the best he can be. 
for the Jedi, learning everything he can from anyone that is willing to tell him, becoming more wise every day to be the best of the best. He also trains his twin sons, Kylo and Luke, to their best potential, teaching them the light is always stronger than the dark. And one has to train one's mind as well as one's body to become the best Jedi they can. As Anakin grows old, Kylo and Luke become the Grand Masters of the Order, and they have children, and on and on it went. Peace was here, and it was here to stay. The end. Hope you enjoyed this What If series, and if you did, like and subscribe, that would be a huge help. Also, check out my shorts if you haven't, I post daily there. Maybe that will give you a reason to subscribe. As always, thanks for watching, and have a great day.